Diane, here we have you on the right-hand side. This is the video of your swing at Radar Golf uh, after, uh, toward the end of the session, after you'd worked on some of the changes. On the left is Grant Waite. Grant Waite visited uh, Radar Golf, uh, I believe, on uh, Wednesday. My goal for you is to for your swing to eventually be, look more like Grant. Um, I think he embodies the, the, the good swing model for a good solid tour swing. In the one position, Grant is, is more centered. Um, he has maybe 55% of his weight on his left side. If we drew a line from up from both ankles and then drew a line from for both ankles for you you can see on Grant his left shoulder is beyond the his ankle uh, and his right shoulder is, in, is on this side so it's clear that Grant has more weight on his left side than his right but it, but he looks centered. He's not centered, but he looks centered. He is about, the, the perfect model is about 55%, 45%. 55 on the left, 45 on right. And you clearly have more weight on your left side than Grant does. This was a drill mode, but at the same time, I think it's, it's time to separate drill mode from swing mode. The drill mode is it can be done. You can move this far over when you're doing the impact drill, um, and you preset yourself into an impact position. At impact, you want 85% of your weight on your left leg, not at the beginning. At the beginning, you want 55%, and at impact, you want 85%. In order to learn how to be 85%. Sometimes we do drills where you preset yourself into an 85. I think it's time to go ahead and start setting up in a 55, 45, and learn how to now move to an 85. Because I think that's what's missing in your swing, the rhythm of the forward movement. I think if you're already on the left, then you never develop the feeling of moving left. Uh, because if you if you start with this much weight on your left, there's there's, you can't move to the left during the swing. And I think absent that move, you lose an important characteristic of a good swing, and that's the rhythm of the swing. Uh, I've used a yellow line to mark where Grant's left knee is at the beginning of the swing, and I've put a, left, a mark where his right hip is. And I've done the same with you. It's clear that your left knee is, is far more away from your center of your foot so that the the angle from the, the line from the knee to the ankle is, is pretty severe. Uh, Grant's left knee is basically on top of his left foot and yours is very forward. Um, also Grant's right hip is just inside his foot where yours is quite a bit inside your foot. Also the shaft length. Uh, Grant has a little bit of shaft lean at the starting position. His hands are a little bit in front of the ball and yours are quite a bit in front. You have a very severe shaft lean. Now starting position is not as important as the impact position. The key is what is your shaft going to look like at impact? And we certainly want to have a shaft lean at impact, but we would need to make sure that it's the right amount of shaft lean. Can you have too much shaft lean? Absolutely. If you are a, if you have too much shaft lean, you're going to hit down too much, and hitting heavy and hitting fat is going to be the result of that. So we need to have a shallow divot, not a deep divot. Grant, in the downswing, has got to try to do things to increase shaft lean, whereas you almost have to do things on the downswing to decrease shaft lean, because this is too much at impact. So I think by setting up a little bit more centered, you will also have a little less shaft lean, but then by learning the correct way to move into impact, you will apply the correct shaft lean. Now here we are in the two position. This is when the shaft is parallel to the ground in the backswing. Grant's hands, when his club 
reaches <coughs> parallel. His hands are basically right on top of his right foot. And so are yours. So in terms of where, where your arms are positioned in relationship to your back foot, they are identical to Grant. But Grant's elbow is almost is also almost on top of his right foot, his right elbow, his right hip are basically in the same place as they as they would be when he sat up because he sat up closer to his right foot than his left. And because you in fact his left knee is in basically the same place as it started. Your left knee is basically in the same place that it started, just that it started so much further away from the right foot that it almost forces a separation here. So I think the setup will allow you to rotate a little bit more around a stable base. You want to rotate around the left side, but you still need to have enough right foot support. That right side has to be stabilized with a, uh, a more even weight distribution here. I think if you try to rotate around the left leg with 80% of your weight or 85% of your weight on your left leg, it's not as a stable base to do the rotation. Here we are in the three position when the left arm is parallel with the ground. Um, Grant's left knee is the same place it started. Uh, the red line is going basically almost through the center of his knee. Um, your left knee, and these, these yellow lines were, were marked just outside the knee. Your left knee is basically right where it started, but it is more to the left than where Grant started his leg. Grant really has not significantly increased his weight into his left leg yet. You have a really good extension here. Uh, you used to have a bent arm here, and I think the work that you've done with both me and Joe of getting the more inside, letting those hands go back to that pocket, having a little bit flatter backswing, I think that has just naturally helped you keep that left arm straight. If we were to look at your swing from waist up, you look very similar to Grant from waist up where you're the most different is in the waist down and it's the waist down part of your swing form that I want to uh, try to reshape a little bit so it looks more like Grant. Now we're in the four position top of the backswing from the waist up uh, you've got a really good extended left arm you've got a r nice right angle um, through your hands and wrists. You've hinged uh, and loaded up your hands real well. I'm sure you remember how your backswing used to be having your shaft here. You, almost, you overswing. You went past parallel. And you achieved that because you, you did uh, bend your elbow and uh, did not have that connected swing. You didn't turn your shoulders uh, so you had to do it all by lifting your arms more. But now you've learned to have a nice coil in your shoulders um, by, by releasing your right hip and turning more, you're able to turn your shoulders more. Grant still has not started moving to the left. Uh, his knee is basically still in the same place it started. These yellow lines were drawn at the, at the one position, and I've just kept them on the screen during the motion here, and the, the camera was on a tripod, so in both of these four positions, I'm seeing the, the knee, uh, your left knees and right hip have actually, if anything, have, have moved slightly to the right, where Grant has maintained the left knee right where it started, and the right hip started turning, therefore it started moving, we're seeing a little bit of a gap here between where his right hip was at the beginning and where it is now, which makes sense if you're rotating your right hip and you're maintaining your weight on your left side, it would do that. Right now, my view is, is if we can improve your one position, 
so that it is in a position to facilitate and support the correct backswing, you'll be in these positions a little bit better. We're now going to go to the five position, the initial move on the, in the downswing, going from four to five. But before I do, I have drawn a green square around both of your heads because I want to see what the head is doing in the downswing. I've also drawn a circle around your right knee, both of your right knees. Now here we are in the five position, and I think it's a, a very telling picture here. Let's look at Grant, and you can see, I'm going to put a, a mark now where his knee is, just outside the knee. The yellow line was marked just outside the knee when he began. And uh, Grant now has moved and fallen, what I call falling, to the target. So on the downswing, going from four to five, he has moved more weight to the left side. He is shifting to the left side, going from four to five. When we look where your knee is at five, it's basically in the same place as Grant's knee is in the five. So one could look at your five position and compare it to Grant's five position and, and make the comment that, boy, that's a really good position. You've got your knee right where it needs to be in the five position. But what's missing is that you don't have in your swing motion the movement to the five position. Grant moves his knee during the four to five movement. You don't move your knee during the four to five movement. Your knee is and the, is in the five position, the same place it was in the one, two, and three, and four position. So you don't have incorporated in your swing uh, the swing motion of moving in the downswing to the left. Now the other thing we look at is, is Grant's right knee. The, Grant, the knee was inside this yellow circle, and it is now moved away from that spot. So his right knee is also moving laterally. You can also see that his head is basically in the, in the box, but it is slightly lower. It has dropped down. It's also dropped a little bit. To, it's moved a little bit to the toward the target, but it's also dropped down. So he is kind of what we, what some players call the squat move. He's starting to load up. He's flexing. He's he's pushing down and, and loading up the ground. He's feeling the ground in that left side. So he's. He's flexing this knee more because he he had room to do that because he because in the four position his knee was where the yellow line is he's able to make that move and, and create an increase in load as he presses the ground down whereas your head is basically in the same place it hasn't dropped your your right knee is basically where it was in the one, two, three, and four position. Has it really moved? I think if we improve your one position and learn how to move into these other positions, uh, this, will, this will become a more dynamic swing. Here we are in the sixth position. This is when the shaft of the club is parallel to the ground. One again, let's look at where Grant's knee is. It's actually moved even slightly more to the left than what it was in the five, and it's certainly much further left than it was in the four. The yellow line represents basically where it was in the one, two, three, and four. Then on the five, he went to green, and, in, and at the six, he's at the red. So going from four, five, and six, he is moving to the target. He is, as you're, you're in the sixth position, and your knee basically is right where it started. Also, uh, Grant's right hip is much further away from the yellow line than your right hip is. Your right hip is basically where it was when you started. And um, so the real, the whole theme of this video review is about how to move from position to position. And it's not just about being in those correct positions, but how to move from position to position correctly. Also, when we look at the position of Grant's right knee, it is much further forward than it was 
it, uh, in the in the yellow line is where it was in the four position. In the five position, it was kind of between the the red and yellow. The red position is where your knee is at uh, the six position. So your right knee is also moving to the to the left. Your right knee is still in the same place it was at the start. Grant's hands are um, very close to his left foot. Um, if we drew a line straight down from his hands, um, it's almost up to the golf ball. And if we drew a straight line down from your hands, um, or maybe another way of putting this, Grant's hands are almost up to his left foot and your hands are still much closer to your back foot. I think it's all interrelated. If, if you don't have any movement to the left, then um, Grant is able to pull, to pull these hands forward because he's allowing his right hip and his right knee to also move to the left side. And um, you're, in order for you to move your hands closer to your left foot, closer to this red line. But try to do that without moving your right hip and right knee closer to the, the line would make it very difficult. I believe the key is understanding that there is a, a maximum amount of weight you can put on your left side. There is a threshold of and a, a limit. And if you start your weight already at that threshold, already at that limit, then you could never have a movement to that limit. Grant starts with 55% of his weight on his left foot and that allows him a range of movement towards the threshold. He wants to move from 55 to 85, but he's not trying to go to 90 or 95 because that would go beyond the threshold of what would support his body at impact. The average pro has 85% of their weight on the left side, and I want you to have 85% of your weight on your left side at impact. But I want you to move to that position. Grant moves from 55 to 85, and you're basically starting at 85, and therefore, because of that start, you cannot logically have any movement because you would be moving beyond a threshold that your body's not going to allow you to make. If anything, if you, for every little movement you might go to, as you move beyond 85, there's another part of your, your brain that's going to pull you back to hold your balance. It's going to want to try to hold you at that threshold. And uh, it's not going to resist moving to 85, but it will resist moving beyond 85. Now here we are in the seventh position. This is the impact position. Let me draw a line first showing this is where Grant's the shaft is coming out of his hands and it's just behind the golf ball is the club. Your shaft um, is ab about there. Your hand the seventh position of your hands is actually further back than they were in the one position where just the opposite has occurred for Grant. Your body sensed that you had too much shaft lean in the beginning and did things in the downswing to have less shaft lean. Grant sensed that he didn't have enough shaft lean in the beginning and did things in the downswing to increase that shaft lean. Also, Grant's right knee is even further forward than the red line. The red line represented the knee's position at the sixth position. It's slightly further forward now in the seventh position, just a little bit. Your right knee is a now has now moved a little bit more from where it was in the one position. This first section is going to be start from the starting one position up to the to the three position and I want us to pay close attention to how his knees almost uh, piston like. The, this left knee will, will move forward as he flexes down more but it will stay basically in the same line. It's going to stay right on top of this foot um, and his back knee, his back leg will extend and this will 
cause that hip turn. So uh, let's look at uh, his leg action and his backswing. It's easy to see Grant turn his hips and you'll see this the knees kind of piston so when he gets to the top this knee here has moved forward and this knee has moved back he has he's starting to extend this right leg and flex the left leg more but he's doing that from a more centered position Now we're going to focus on Grant's leg action in the downswing. Now we can see Grant side by side where on the left is his four position and where they are at impact. And he is letting this right thigh, his right knee, his right hip turn into the golf ball. When we look at where his belt buckle is pointing, it's pointing this way in the fore position. But his belt buckle is clearly forward at impact. When he moves from the fore to the seventh position, it's, a, it's not just a turn, it's not just a slide, it's a slide turn. I use the word slide to represent that he is moving his weight to the left. His center of gravity is going from a 55 to an 85. And so the, his center of gravity is moving towards the target while he's turning. It's a special kind of turn. And when, his, when he gets to impact, his belt buckle is pointing in front of the golf ball. But what allowed that was the turning of the right hip, the moving of the right thigh towards the ball, the movement of the right knee towards the ball. Also, when we look at this right leg at impact, it is not a straight leg. There is a flex there. The right leg is, is in the process. It may not be fully extended, but it's in the process of extending. Now we're going to look at your lower body action from the 1 to the 4 position. Now we're going to look at your leg action from one to four. On the left is your setup, your one position. On the right is your four position. I've drawn a red line uh, in both pictures off the center of your ankle straight up and I've drawn a green line uh, from the hip to the ankle. Now the first thing I observe here is that during your backswing you actually move your right hip closer to the red line then you started it. So you have, instead of moving towards the target, you actually move away from the target. You also are flexing your left leg more, but you, you've really done so because you moved your hips back, creating more angle. Knee is basically in the same place, but the hip moved back. It's not that the knee moved forward, because you started so, so far forward. Because you start with almost 85% uh, of your weight on your left side at the beginning, or almost at the maximum threshold to begin with, you cannot increase that during the backswing. In fact, if anything, you decrease it slightly. So what we saw in Grant's hip action from 1 to 4 was his right hip rotated and moved away from his red line, whereas your right hip, even though it's there is some turning going on, it, there's also a shifting going on and moving a little bit towards the red line. Now we're going to look at the leg action from uh, 4 to 7. So on the right here we have um, your 4 position and on the left we have your 7th position at impact. First observation is is that you have moved your right hip towards the target. It's moved away from the red line. But I think it's important to note that you you have kept your right leg very extended where Grant has a kind of a 
a flex in his right knee where his knee is driving towards his left side. You are sliding but not turning. Grant has his belt buckle a little bit more forward than you do and it's because you really don't turn this this right thigh and, and right knee towards impact, towards the golf ball. Grant is able to make that modest little turn into the golf ball because he has blended with that turn the movement of his weight to the 85 position at impact because he's moving from 55 to 85 then his center of gravity is moving laterally he has blended this lateral move with the turning of the lower body now we're going to look at the post impact position the ninth position this is when the right arm is parallel to the ground and let's begin with the red line that's drawn from the left ankle straight up you can see how that red line goes almost through the center of Grant's body. It's going right through his right pocket. Um, the front of his ball cap is crossing that line. Um, it's going right through the center of his chest. He clearly has more weight on his left leg in the, in the ninth position than he had at any other time. He is moving he's probably he may have 90 percent of his weight now on his left leg if we look at your weight distribution you do not have yourself you have not positioned yourself on top of that left leg as much as Grant has you still have the center of your hips behind the line your head is behind the line uh, you're not really on top of that left foot one of the main reasons is that Grant has moved his right knee up to the left foot. The, the, quad, the right quadricep is right, if you drew a line, this green line here from the hip down to the knee, it's, it's parallel to the red line. So he's moved that muscle mass up there. He has flexed this knee, whereas your leg is straight. And uh, when we look at the back foot, Grant is on the toe, and you are as well, but he has pivoted that toe slightly. His heel has turned a little bit with the, with the right side of his body turning. The other thing I want to point out is... Um, how Grant has positioned his hands at this post-impact position. Grant is not wearing a glove on his left hand, but if he were wearing a white glove, we would see a little bit of that white glove underneath the right hand. And your white glove is above the right hand. Grant and all top players cross, have their wrist crossed at this position. I'm not going to say that they cross their wrist during the swing, but they end up being in a crossed position. You don't want to be flipping your hands through and, and rotating your, your, your arms. But the natural position that they end up in, in the ninth position, is a crossed position. I think Grant is an excellent swing model for you to uh, adapt to. In other words, I would like for your ninth position to look close to what Grant looks like in the ninth position. And the main thing that is different is what is how he moves his right leg. Now I recognize that this particular swing review was a fairly long one. I covered a lot of different things. Taking your swing from point A to point B is a process of learning. And there's two types of learning. There's the intellectual learning. And that's what this swing review is doing. It's it's giving you information. You have to also have the body learn and that's where we we don't want our body to become overwhelmed with how to learn these different positions. But we need to boil this intellectual information down to some simple things to work on so that when we work on the physical motion that we need to train we just need to identify a very few things to work on.
To me, the thing that we need to adjust first is your one position, your starting setup. I think you're shifted way too much to the left and um, makes it difficult to, to have the correct movement to the left in your downswing. So I just want you to feel like you have a more centered setup, a more balanced setup, and just make sure that you feel like your hands are slightly in front of the golf ball and that your left hip is bumped just a little bit, just a little bit to the left.